Chris Godinez, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated here and remind of mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. I would like to thank my sponsor, Better Better Help. No, Better Help. There we go. Better Help. B E T T E R H E L P. Better Help dot com slash Chris Godinez. They're an online therapy company. They are awesome. They are everywhere in the world. So if you are somewhere in a country that is making you wait for two years, get on to betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinez. Fill out a questionnaire. They will place you with a licensed professional therapist, uh, master's level or PhD level. So thank you. Betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinez. Okay. Let us dive into today's question. <sighs> thank God it's Friday. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, what turns you into an adult who cannot take a compliment? Narcissists, abusers. So basically our parents are supposed to be our mirror. They're supposed to mirror back to us who we are in the world. They teach us, you know, our worth, our, you know, things like that when we're growing up. Okay. So they're the first love affair that we have. But if we've got a parent who hates themselves and hates us, we get a funhouse effect. So you know funhouse mirrors, how they're wavy, they're not normal. That's that's how we start seeing ourselves is not normal. You know, we, we don't like ourselves. We don't um, think that we're worthy. We don't, you know, feel uh, worthy of love because their love is conditional. Let's be clear. Abusers love is 110% conditional. It is not unconditional it is conditional you do this and i'll treat you okay that that's their version of love okay let's let's be clear they don't love they wouldn't know love if it walked up and did the watusi with them you know what i'm saying so love to them is conditional it's a it's a transaction like seriously like to them it's a it's a business deal you know you scratch my back i'll scratch yours that's how they view it so love really is respect they don't respect themselves. They don't respect anybody else. So they don't understand that it's not a what can I get. So to them, it's like, well, I'm going to get everything I can and, you know, screw you, you know, kind of thing. You know, I got mine, screw you. That's their version of love. That is not love. Love is unconditional. You give it freely. There are no strings attached. It's not a transaction. It's not a business deal. It's not what can I get, you know, but that's how they view it. So when we are raised with somebody who is continually making it a transaction, making it a business deal, or worse, we can do no right. We're the scapegoat. Everything's wrong. Nothing's right. You're bad. You're awful. You're horrible. You're terrible. You're stupid. You're this, you're that. You're too fat. You're too thin. You're too tall. You're too short. You're too, oh my good God. So nothing is ever right about us, right? So when somebody gives us a compliment, okay, two things happen. One is we go, oh, no, 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 you know, that, that can't be right. No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not worthy of it or I don't deserve it or, or the other thing that's going on probably simultaneously is what do you want? Mm -hmm, totally. Because we have no trust, nor should we coming out of one of these relationships because we had no reason to trust. So it's a matter of retraining ourselves to trust ourselves and to start accepting compliments. So with a narcissist, there was always an ulterior motive. Always, always. They don't give anything freely, nothing. There ain't no free lunch with a narcissist. That's for damn sure. So for us, it's always that what's next is, you know, is the other shoe going to drop? I mean, what's going on because that's exactly what would happen they would they would be nice to us and then it would be immediately followed or within a day or two or an hour or two or maybe a few minutes by punishment you know so it's like we are always waiting for that shoe to drop so that's why we don't trust compliments that's why we don't like them because it's like well what does this mean what do you want what's what is this about you know what's gonna follow this so that is that is that so hold on so the way to overcome that how to accept a compliment so narcissists don't give compliments so we never learn how to accept one think of it that way it's a learned behavior it's a practice 
So when somebody gives a compliment, you simply say, thank you. I appreciate it. That's it. You do not have to compliment them back unless you want to. But generally, here's the thing. A compliment is a gift. A real compliment, not not a narcissistic compliment, which is a what can I get if I butter them up, you know, kind of thing. But a real compliment, like somebody who comes by and says, hey, I really love that shirt. Oh, well, thank you. You know, hey, your hair looks good today. Thank you. That's it. That's all you got to say. You are not being a narcissist. You are not being self-centered. You are not being selfish. You're not being anything else. Narcissists make us believe that if we accept compliments and are not humble, like they would know anything about being humble, please that we're just like them, right? Nope, nope, negatory. That we're bad and wrong. You know, that we're that we're selfish, that we're narcissistic, that we're this, that we're that. They're projecting. They are projecting. So healthy, normal people are able to take compliments and say thank you and let it in. It's super hard for us to let compliments in because compliments were used, like everything else, an object to be used. They were used to make us let our guard down so that the abuser could abuse more effectively. That's why we don't like compliments. We don't trust them. So the way to overcome that is get with a good therapist, a good trauma therapist, okay? Work on self-esteem. The Self-Esteem Workbook by Glenn Schiraldi. I'm not kidding you. Do it. So, um, sorry, I'm getting <laughs> texts. Ah, it's Friday, people. Go on vacation, do something. Um, so uh, work on the self-esteem workbook, okay? That's gonna help a lot. The other thing you're gonna do is mirror work. I know, I know I say this every damn time you hear me, but here's the deal, it works. And it helps recondition your brain to accept compliments in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do mirror work and you're gonna compliment yourself. And I can hear all of you going, ew, why, why? Because you need to get used to it. So, hi, good to see you. Have a great day. You know what? You look awesome. God, I love your hair. Your glasses look cool. Great shirt. Have a great day. Walk out. Allow it in. It's going to feel weird. Trust me. I know. Been there, done that. Bought the program, don't need to see the play again. Do you see where I'm going with that? It's like, you, you're going to feel weird. You are, because you're not used to it. But remember, mirror work is you reparenting you with the parent you needed but did not get. Mm -hmm, let me say that again. Mirror work is you reparenting you as the parent you needed but did not get. So that's why you've got to compliment yourself. You've got to mirror to yourself, mirror to yourself, an accurate picture of who you are. You're awesome. You have feelings. You feel. Those mother cluckers don't. Okay? And that's something you can say. You know what? I love how feeling you are. I love that you have empathy. I love you. And then walk out. And a lot of people have a hard time saying that. So I'm saying work the self-esteem workbook, work CPTSD from surviving to thriving by Pete Walker. Something else you can do, write yourself a love letter. What is good about you? What is great about you? What do you like about you? Nothing negative. No negative. No, 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 no. I can hear everybody going, oh, but this, that, no, stop. Thank you for your input. Shut the bleep up. Why? Because you say so. I get to say nice things about myself because I am the boss, period. Okay. So that's what I want you to do. So write yourself a love letter. And some people have a lot of fun with it. You know, I had one do it in the style of a, you know, a civil war, <laughs> my dearest Marilyn or whatever, you know, it's like doing, having fun with it, you know, have fun with it. The other thing you can do is you can start training yourself to do nice compliments throughout the day. Yeah, I do look good today. Yeah, I do like my hair today. Yeah, I like how I feel. Yeah, I like saying nice things to myself. I get to. I get to say nice things to myself. Mom, dad, whoever couldn't say nice things because that was their issue, not mine. I get to like myself. I get to say nice things to myself. So that's what I want you to start working on. Write yourself a love letter. Work on the inner child. How old were you when you realized you could not take compliments? That's the age to work on. 
Okay. So inner child workbook, Catherine Taylor or inner child regaining the inner child, restoring the inner child. I'm going to have to look it up again by Lucia Cappuccioni. So one hand is the dominant hand writes the adult non-dominant hand writes the child. So you want to do that. The other thing I have my clients do and they hate it is a one minute brag. For one minute, you say everything that you like about yourself, physically, mentally, emotionally, and otherwise. You cover everything. I love my laugh. I love my nose. I love my hair. I love uh, my sense of humor. I love how much I like people. I love the, the respect I give myself. I love the respect I give others. I love um, my feet. I love my feet. My feet are awesome. Uh, I love... Um, the joy. I love the childlike wonder. I love, do you see where I'm going? And really, I let just people go, right? And by the time, you know, and then when they start losing steam, I'm just like, you did it for five minutes. <laughs> and they're just like, what? You know, because it's so unnatural for them that they don't, they lose track of time because they're just starting to focus in on, you know, the things that they do like, right? And so they go way longer than they think they will. So I call it the one minute brag. So, and it's great. And it does remind us of who we are. So in line with the show that I did on Sunday, last week, or this last week, you know, we forget who we are. We forget who we are. So it's really important to remind ourselves and taking compliments is part of that. All right, my loves, you guys be good. Have a great couple of days. And on Sunday, we are going to discuss why it is really a good idea to get with a trauma therapist. You can work on things on your own. However, I'm going to explain why it's usually healthier or better or easier with a therapist. And I'm going to explain what, what the difference is. So <laughs> white knuckling versus, versus getting an accountability partner is really what a therapist is doing. They're holding you accountable for doing the work. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why it's important to do the work and why it's important to um, have a, a sounding board. So we're going to talk about all that. All right, you guys have a great couple of days and I will see you on Sunday. Bye.